Adhan, the moon says, I won't come out until three days later. Then what would have happened to everybody for Eid? If the moon says, no, I'm not going to listen to Allah Ta'ala and I'm going to use my willpower and I'm going to come out three days later, <laughs> then we would have had chaos. So whether it is the moon or the sun says that, no, today I'm too tired. So many years I've obeyed Allah Ta'ala. Now I'm going to come out a little late next morning. So now the Fajr namaz, what would have happened? There would have been chaos if all these things had also had willpower. So Allah Ta'ala has forced them. karha. Whether they like it or not, Allah Ta'ala is making them obey. So Allah Ta'ala could have done the same thing with us human beings that he could have forced us to obey him. What was difficult in that? Are you understanding that if Allah Ta'ala has made the sun, the moon and all other things like that, obey him. Whether they like it or not, they have to obey and they have to follow. There is no willpower. They cannot disobey. Or the angels of Allah Ta'ala. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. So they too cannot disobey. As the Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam could not disobey. As the Mikail, as the Israfil, as the Israel and all the Malaika. Now if they say we are very pious, muttaqi and we are very close to Allah Ta'ala and we are very holy, then we'll say that you cannot disobey. If the blind person says he doesn't look at haram, then there's no kamal. If he's the deaf person says, I don't listen to haram, there's no greatness. The dumb person says, I don't make ghibat of anybody, then there's no greatness. So to be given the willpower and then do the right thing, that is the kamar. So Allah wa ta'ala has preordained means merely in common language, in the layman's language, in simple terms. That Allah ta'ala, because of his vast knowledge, because he is alim, Allah Ta'ala knows everything. Allah Ta'ala knows fully well what this person will do in his future life. Now Allah Ta'ala gave every person hidayat. When the souls were created, every soul was given hidayat. Alastu bi rabbikum. So every soul was given hidayat. They all said qalu bala. They all said bala. So you can see that the hidayat was there for everyone. Allah Ta'ala did not deprive any soul of hidayat. If Allah Ta'ala at that stage when the souls were created, some were given hidayat and some were not given hidayat, then we'll say again it's injustice. So every soul was given hidayat at that stage. But when the person comes into this world, now in the world of the souls, there were no buildings and there were no businesses and there were no cinemas and theatres and discos, nothing in the world of souls. So they all the souls said, indeed we believe in Allah Ta'ala. But now that they come into this world, as they grow up, then around them is a different environment. Around them is a different environment altogether. Now sometimes a temptation towards sins and sometimes an encouragement to do good deeds. So Allah Ta'ala therefore gave every person a willpower. He has given every person a willpower. And it is with that willpower that he operates every other activity of his life. Because if we say that Allah Ta'ala has decided to fill up Jahannam, so why should I do any good deeds? As the student says that it caused me depression when I read that in Bukhari Sharif. And I was trying to make some progress, I was making some kind of ibadat and things, but it caused me depression. That if I am going to go to Jahannam, why must I do it? So Allah Ta'ala has given this willpower. Now if Allah Ta'ala, if we have to say, that he is the one who has preordained everything. So everything will happen as he has preordained. So then why must the person even go to business? Why must he go to the college and university? Why must the student bother so much to study his books? He must say that if Allah Ta'ala has will that I will become a doctor, then I will become a doctor. Why must I research so much of books? And why must I go far away from my home and stay in a university and then go through all the other difficulties and hardships that go together in a student's life if he's really a committed student. There's no need for all that. He must close all those books, put it away, and when the examination time comes, they say, but uh, you were not even in classes. They say, yeah, but if Allah Ta'ala had ordained that I must become a doctor, I'll become a doctor, so I want to write the examination. So will he become a doctor like that? So he believes that everything is happening with the will of Allah Ta'ala, but he's still making that effort to become a doctor. Otherwise, there was no need for any kind of effort. 
The same with the businessman. That if it was Allah Ta'ala's will that he will earn 100,000 for the month in his big business, so then Allah Ta'ala will send it. He must keep the shop closed, he must stay at home, and he must wait. He must just wait and then go and check, keep checking his bank balance if it came way in there. Keep going to the bank and ask the bank manager, did any amount come into my account? Then we ask from where, say from the heavens. <laughs> did any angel come and make a deposit here in my name? Whatever was in my taqdeer. So he still makes an effort, he goes there, he makes an effort. But after that, whatever happens, then he accepts that that is now from Allah Ta'ala. As Ali radiallahu ta'ala explained it very well, he said, pick up one of your legs. So the person picked up one leg. He said, now pick up the other leg. He said, no, I can't do that. You can only stand and if you try to pick up both legs, you'll fall. Which means that there is some tadbir and some taqdeer. That you have to make the effort, how much you can make. And then if something is beyond that, then we will say that is taqdeer. That you that it was not your, within your means or your capacity. So just as the person makes an effort in everything else, the same goes with his a'mal, with his actions and with his deeds. That he can't just say the taqdeer, if Allah Ta'ala wills, I'll make namaz, if Allah Ta'ala wills, I'll read Quran Sharif, if Allah Ta'ala wills, I'll do this and do that. And if I'm not doing it, then because Allah Ta'ala does not will, that is why I'm not doing it. So the preordaining means that Allah Ta'ala has recorded that knowledge of His it is pre-recorded because of his knowledge that what this person will do with his willpower, whether he will pick up that knife and stab somebody or whether he will pick up that knife and cut onions and potatoes, that Allah wa ta'ala has recorded it. Whether that person will use the gun for his self-defense or whether the person will use the gun to shoot somebody down for stealing and for robbery purposes. Now Allah ta'ala has recorded that. Whether this person will sleep and make and miss his namazes or he will get up and make his namaz. Now all that has been recorded. So that does not mean that because Allah Ta'ala has written it, so it is happening without this person's willpower. This person is going to be questioned because of his willpower. A simple example, a person is traveling. He t- telephones us and he says that he is leaving from Johannesburg. I give this example many times. The person is leaving from Johannesburg. He is taking a certain train and that train will be stopping on the way at Harrismith, at Ladysmith, at Pittamaritzburg and then it will arrive at Durban. So now there is a timetable that this train stops at Harrismith at a certain time. It stops at Ladysmith at a certain time. It stops at Peter Maritzburg at a certain time and it arrives at Durban at a certain time. So knowing that, having that knowledge which is in the timetable of the strains, now when that person departed from there at 10 o'clock, so we said that at 12 o'clock he's going to be in Harrismith. It's a very fast train, he'll stop at Harrismith 12 o'clock. So we made a note of it, 12 o'clock Harrismith. Now we look at our watch, he says, well, I've had a record made here, 12 o'clock he'll be in Harrismith. So he has arrived at Harrismith. Then afterwards, after we look at our watch again, we say, well, another two hours time, it's in Peter Maritzburg. So we made a note of it. Now we looked at it, we said, well, the time is 3 o'clock or 2 o'clock, so now he's in Peter Maritzburg. And then he will be in Durban certain time. Now our writing it on the book, in the book, we wrote it because of our knowledge that this train stops here a certain time, there a certain time, there a certain time. So we wrote it in our book and we're watching our clock and we're saying the train is here, the train is there, the train is there and the train is here. So was the train moving because of our knowledge? Was the train moving because we had recorded it in our diary or our book that the train will be here certain time, certain time, certain time? Was it moving because of our knowledge? Or did we force the driver of the train that because I've got it written here in this book now, so you have to have the train there a certain time. The engine driver, he is the one that's operating and there is a system, there's a whole network. Now they're using their willpower their, and the, all the other things that are required for the train to move, the train is moving. And it can still go off. Our recording does not necessarily mean that it will be on time there. 
we made a